Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I thought that I would bring you guys something a little bit different today. So we're gonna be doing some Americana or 4th of July Dollar Tree DIYs. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys stay to the very end, I will tell you more about today's sponsor. So to start off on the first project, I take this year of first sign from Dollar Tree and I take these pieces of poplar that I get from Home Depot for around $2 and some change or $3 a piece. So I take two of those and lay them side by side on the sign and then I had some scrap pieces from different projects and I just kind of measure how long I need the middle pieces to be and I cut down three of those pieces as well as cut the longer pieces down to 26 inches each. Once I had them cut, then I sanded them down. I laid them out the way that I wanted them. And then I take some large popsicle sticks. I cut those in fours. So I cut them in half and then I cut them in half again. And then I just use some hot glue to attach these on the corners to hold these pieces together. Then laid my sign down so that I could have this middle piece um, in the right spot. And then once I had that in its spot that I liked, then I just repeated those steps. So you guys know my little Bella is right here next to me. So if you hear baby babble, that's why she's just hanging out here watching me do this. Um, but I did just lay out the sign to make sure that's where I wanted it. And then I took 12 large stir sticks that I get in pack of threes for a dollar from the Home Depot as well. I wanted a very tight fit. So I did measure and then cut these just a few times to make sure that they fit in there really nice and then I cut them obviously I painted the frame white and then I painted six of the cut stir sticks white and six of the cut stir sticks with my crimson Waverly chalk paint leaving just a little bit of that wood showing through so it's kind of like a reverse distressing that way it looks nice and weathered and old and rustic the way that I like it um, but in the meantime Prior to painting these red, I did take some acrylic Waverly paint in that blue color. I forget the exact color, but it wasn't as dark as I would have liked it. I wanted like, I was going for like a navy color. So I did just add a touch of ink Waverly chalk paint just to deepen that blue color. And then I went in with a little bit of darker blue while the paint was still wet and I gave it just like some distressing and it just gave it some dimension and some character. Next, I take my star cutout chalk couture transfers and look how beautiful that transfer is. But I did go ahead and cut those up so that I can use them. And I also took these stars that I got out of a huge package of just random wood pieces from Dollar Tree and I painted those stars white and I do believe that I used 10 stars. Next, I take the transfer that I want, which is a star with a whole bunch of like patriotic words, and I fuzz that transfer until you think that you fuzzed it enough, and then fuzz it some more. That way it doesn't pull up your paint, or it doesn't stretch your transfer when you pull that up. And I went ahead and I transferred that on with some white chalk paste as well as gold shimmer paste. Now, I know I'm going to get flack in the comments because I do use Chalk Couture throughout this entire video, but number one, you guys, I invested in these products. I believe in these products. I found a easy way to achieve high-end looking decor, and I found it to where anybody can do it so you don't have to be a pro so I'm sorry but I'm gonna use them and if it wasn't for Chalk Couture I would have never gotten this video out to you guys this week if I had to print these off and then um, you know trace them on and go over it I would have ran out of time and I want to bring you guys like decor DIYs 
and I want to do it efficiently. So this helps me do that. But I will try to leave free printables in the description box below for those of you who can't afford it. I do recommend these. They're amazing for everybody, but I do understand that not everybody can afford it. So when I can, I will leave free printables in the description box that is as close to these designs as I can get. Um, but with all that being said, I did go ahead and glue that sign down and then I took my stars and I glue them all the way around the star. Next, I flip it over. I forgot to mention that I did end up putting this paper in the back of the sign because it was literally sticking to everything and driving me nuts. So I did want to put that disclaimer out there. Um, but once I had all that put together, then I do take our stir sticks and I just go back and forth from red to white. So I alternate them and I do put them on an angle, kind of make, or <laughs> here we go you guys famous line of melissa um i do alternate them and i put them kind of like a shutter so on an angle uh, that's the look i was going for making this bottom part look like a shutter and i am so pleased with the way this turned out i'm not big into americana or fourth of july decor but i did want to step outside of the box this year and try it I asked on my community tab, you guys said, yes, do it. So here we are, and I love the way that this turned out. I did distress the edges with some antique wax by Waverly just to bring out those edges and make it look antiquey and weathered and i could not be more thrilled with the way these with the way this turned out. So I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. So if you're new here, my name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would become part of my crafty family by just clicking that red subscribe button down below. And then next to it, you just wanna tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. Do all the YouTubey things, like, comment, all the things. So on my channel, every single week, I bring you guys my earrings of the week. My sweet friend Amanda sent these to me. I love them so much. They go really well with this shirt. And I never had a pair of earrings that actually went with this shirt. So when I received these, I was so grateful. If you guys want to send me a pair of earrings so that I could showcase them on the earrings of the week, down below you will find my P.O. box and I greatly appreciate every single one of you. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIY. Okay, for our next project, I think this might be my favorite, you guys. I love the way that it turned out, but I did have these scrap pieces of poplar from a ton of my other projects, so I did go ahead and use that same blue that I mixed up to paint all three of them. I will get the measurements of these pieces and leave it in the description box for you. That way, if you want to recreate it, you can, um, but while those dried, I took this little wooden plaque that I got from Dollar Tree, and I gave it a distress coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I also had these other scrap pieces of like the plunger handle from Dollar Tree. I used them on a different project so I did go ahead and I painted these. One of them I painted with the white Waverly chalk paint again in the distressed um, coat. I do that for all of anything that I paint in this video. I do give it a distressed coat but while my paint um, my paintbrush was wet. I did distress that little black. Oh my goodness, you guys. That little plaque piece with the red and the blue as well as the gold here in a minute. You'll see just to kind of tie in all those colors. Um, and then for the plunger pieces, I did paint one with the red, one with the blue, and one with the white. Once all of that was painted, then I do take the white one and I tape it off. I wanted just like gold stripes on the top of this. So I go ahead and tape it off and then paint one stripe, let that dry, give it a second coat, pull the tape back, and then I create another stripe on the bottom of it.
Next, like I said, I go in with that gold acrylic paint that I get from Walmart. And while my brush was still wet from painting the stripes on the white little firework, I do just distress the edges and just randomly paint gold streaks everywhere. Um, again, to just tie all of those colors together. Next, for the red firework, I go in with some of that blue as well as white Waverly chalk paint and distress that as well. So for the blue little firework, what I did was take this chalk couture transfer and it is a star with fireworks and little stars and all kinds of cute little things but all I wanted to do on the top of this little firework was put some stars on there now I don't know about you but I'm not good at drawing stars so all I did was just lay my transfer down on my fuzzing cloth I then pulled up the part that I wanted to use and just laid my firework down on there and then I just transferred on the stars drying in between coats I also did end up adding some gold stars I did that off camera because I decided on that later but I just basically did the same thing but with my shimmer gold Next, I lay out my pieces to see where I want it before I glue it. And then once I am satisfied, I take my um, mini finger sander. I have this linked in my Amazon store in the description box. I have all of my links in one spot um, in my link tree. If you have trouble finding my links, I put them all in one spot just so that my that my description box wasn't just filled with a ton of links um, but I do just take my finger sander and I distress the edges as well as um, like the front of these pieces and then I lay it out and I glue them down with some hot glue. Next, I take these little letter transfers. Now these are old, so with Chalk Couture, um, after certain seasons, a lot of items will be um, retired. So these are retired, but I will leave all the products that I can link as well as a different font in the description box below all in one link and keep in mind you can add and subtract from that link as you like um, but I do just like to put them all in one spot. So once I had the word July transferred on then I take a one in one <laughs> one eighth inch drill bit there you go Melissa and I drill holes in the top of our little fireworks and then I take some wired jute that I got from Dollar Tree um, I have a ton of new stuff that I got from Dollar Tree if you guys want to see a Dollar Tree haul let me know in the comments down below um, I can film that for you this weekend and get it out to you so just let me know but I do just wrap some of that around a pencil and then I cut it off with my wire cutters and cut it into three sections. And then I just take some hot glue and I stick those in the holes. And then once the glue is dry, then I'm able to finagle with this and pull it apart. Now this wired jute was kind of annoying because the edges would fray away from the wire. So I did have to go in and cut that wire away so you couldn't see it and... I don't know, I feel like they should have glued this entire thing, but hey, what do I know? I'm just I'm just a consumer. I am not the inventor of jute wire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once I had those all set up and I had them together like I liked, then I take some jute, I wrap it around, and then I just tie a bow in the front and cut the ends off. You guys, I love these little fireworks. They're so stinking cute. I think for never doing patriotic before decor, <laughs> I think that for not doing patriotic decor, in the past, I should have said. Um, I think I did a pretty good job. You guys can let me know in the comments down below because this is definitely not my comfort zone, but I think it's fun to step out of your comfort zone and you know, you really can know your limitations. And if you mess it up, then you can always just do it again. Um, but anyway, I wanted to make little flags. So I had these banner pieces from Chalk Couture. It's kind of like drop cloth material. And I just laid out my transfer on it and created a shape that would fit 
the words that I wanted to put on my little flags. And then once I had them cut out, then I take my Chalk Couture ink. Um, I've never used the ink on my channel before, but it is permanent. You heat set it after you transfer it, and it literally becomes one with your fabric or your cup, whatever it is that you're wanting to make permanent. And it's literally so amazing. So that's what I love about Chalk Couture. It's so versatile. You can use it on so many different surfaces. The paste is erasable. The ink is permanent. So if you want to make shirts or whatever the case may be, um, the options are endless. Um, but anyway, I just go ahead and I transfer on. I kind of mix and match the two transfers that I had. So I put the USA on one and then Freedom Established 1776 on another. Once I heat set that, I did that off camera. Um, I just used my Cricut Easy Press. <laughs> I forgot what it was called for a second. And I just... Um, heat set that on for a couple seconds and then I take a skewer from Dollar Tree and I glue those to the edge. Next I take R4 and glue that to the middle of the plaque making sure that it stays upright with a Jenga block in the back. I then just laid the fireworks out where I wanted them and I didn't glue those down just yet but I did take my one flag oh and I forgot to mention that I did make the um, freedom one the freedom flag shorter than I did the USA flag and you'll see why in a minute so I just figure out where I want this and I wanted it kind of going on an angle. So I took that same drill bit and drilled on an angle and then used some hot glue to secure that USA in. And then for the Freedom one, I did kind of want that on an angle as well. So I drilled another hole, I glued that in and then I glued that to the USA flag. Next, I glued down our fireworks to the left of the flags. I readjusted the bow. And I honestly was going to be done after this, but I felt that it was missing a little something. So I did just take a wooden star that I had, as well as two other wooden stars um, that are much smaller. I painted the larger star gold, and then I painted the smaller stars, one with my crimson Waverly chalk paint, and the other one with my blue paint that I've been using this entire, or actually, I painted that white and distressed it with the blue that we've been using this entire time and then I just randomly glue them down to the gold star and distress that with some white Waverly chalk paint and my little mini chip brush that I use all the time. And last but most certainly not least, I glued down the corners of the star right in front of those flags. And you guys, I love the way that this turned out. I was not too sure how it was going to turn out when I was doing all the pieces. But once it's put all together, I cannot believe that I actually made this. And I am just so in love with it. I would just love to thank Anonymous Times 2 for buying me craft supplies. This is not a cheap job, you guys. I spend a ton of money on supplies and equipment, so I do appreciate it so, so much. If you enjoy my work and would like to buy me craft supplies and get a shout out on my next video, follow the link in the description box below. But just know that you do not have to support me monetarily. I love each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every one of you. You can support your favorite creators, with so many different ways you don't have to do it by buying them things you can just watch the videos like comment share watch the ads there's so many different ways and whatever way you support me i appreciate you so much so to show my appreciation and show you guys how much I absolutely love each and every one of you, I'm holding a giveaway for this little mini miter saw that you guys ask about all the time. The giveaway rules are to like this video, comment your favorite DIY that I've ever made, share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well, and then you guys will have until Friday, June 25th at 11.59pm, and the winner will be announced on my community 
community tab. I wanted to give everybody plenty enough time to enter, share it with people who love DIY and think that could benefit from this as well. Like I said, make sure you have your notifications turned on. That way when I announce the winner, you guys will be notified. And once again, I just want to reiterate how much I appreciate every single one of you and I love you guys so much. So let's jump back into today's DIYs. Moving on to our last and final project, I take three of these Easter signs from Dollar Tree, I cut the little handles off and then I lay them face up side by side. I then just take some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue and I just glue the popsicle sticks right down the seams to glue this together to make one big sign. Now for the end, I did have to cut a popsicle stick down because it didn't fit three. Um, but once I had it all glued together, then I take some lightweight spackling once again from Dollar Tree and I just spackle those holes. Next, I take my America transfer. Now with bigger transfers, you wanna lay the transfer sticky side up and then fuzz your transfer. That way, it just makes your life 10 times easier. Um, you're not gonna have it stick together as much and have as many issues. And then to wash these, I always wash the bigger ones in my tub. So um, I did just wanna give you guys those tips. So I then took my colonial blue, I transferred the wording around America with the colonial blue, I transferred the America with my white chalk paste, and then the Liberty, the beautiful and established 1776, or actually Liberty and the stars and the beautiful. I did gold. I left the middle stars so that I could transfer on with those um, with that blue. And then the established 1776, I went back in with my white. this is where the magic happens you guys this literally took me five minutes and look how high end and amazing this transferred on i just love these so much i literally cannot get enough i don't do chalk couture for the money you guys i honestly truly love these products more than i don't even know what but I just want to share it with the world because it's so easy to use and anybody can do it. So anyway, once I had that transferred on, then I go in with these little trim pieces that I got back when Sophia picked out her trim pieces for her truck in the video we did a while ago. If you haven't seen that video, I will link that in the right hand corner. My daughter joined me on a video. It was so, so fun, um, but I did pick these up. I don't even know. I think the section was like where all the spindles and the railing stuff is at Home Depot. So I stained those pieces after I cut those down to size. Then I uh, dry brushed some white Waverly chalk paint and I glued those down. And I did forget to mention that I stained these pieces with my Kona stain. And I also wanted to mention that you guys take the time to flip your sign around when you're gluing your pieces down. I always start at the top and then I do the sides and then the bottom. That way I can make sure that it fits together really nicely. The bottom piece was a little bit too long so I did just go ahead and cut that down. Um, but I was really glad that I put the sides on first. Next, I go in with some gold and I dry brush all the way around the edges as well as the um, red that we used and the blue just to tie this all together once again. And I think the frame is my favorite part, you guys. It looks so, so good. 
I loved making this Americana decor. You guys can let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video. Um, it's kind of weird like stepping out of my comfort zone, but I just wanted to show you guys that it's okay to step out of your comfort zone. We're not all going to be perfect at everything, but you'll never know if you can do something if you don't try it. So that's why I always love to encourage you guys to try new things, even if it scares you, even if it intimidates you, just try it because you'll never know if you can do it if you don't try it. Sponsor is Skillshare and Skillshare is an online community for those of us who love to learn at any level. Skillshare is a huge community of tons and tons of different classes on so many different niches of learning creativity. You will find anything from music to web design, photography, but my personal favorites are watercolor, anything that has to do with art, so really it's the fine arts. Right now, my favorite is Rosalie Hazlett with her attention to detail and her classes are very short and to the point. So I really feel like I know her and I feel like I'm sitting right in front of her in a classroom, but it's from the comfort of my own home. You guys know I'm a busy mama and I don't really have much time to spare. So that's why I love Skillshare because the classes are, like I said, very short and to the point and I don't have to sacrifice my desire to learn since many classes are under 60 minutes and packed full of so many useful tips and tricks to get me going with a new skill. Not only are the classes short and to the point, they're affordable, which is my personal favorite because as you guys know, I am always loving a deal and I love to save some money and I know that you guys too. So for a limited time, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description box will get a free premium trial with Skillshare. I hope you guys will enjoy it as much as I do. And again, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So that is it for this video you guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed it as much as I did making it for you guys. I think that each one of these pieces are unique and different from anything that I've ever seen. And if you guys have been around for a while, then you know that I shoot for that. I don't like my stuff to look like anybody else's. I like to have my own little style and if somebody looks at these pieces, then they'll know that I made them. That's just kind of like my thing here on YouTube. YouTube. I think in the climate that we're in, we really have to do a lot to stand out. So anyway, um, with all that being said, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Again, like, comment your favorite DIY that I've ever made in the comment section. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. The giveaway ends Friday, June 25th at 11.59 p.m. and the winner will be announced on my community tab. So you want to make sure that you have your notifications on. And with all that being said, don't forget to don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you a part of my crafty family. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. And I love all of you with all my heart and soul. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.